chuckle channel and the Ken Dodd Show. Here he comes, beaming brightly and blooming benignly as he bounds bravely into battle, full of beans, buns, bacon, and best British butter. With bells on his braces and bats in his belfry, Ben Bott, I mean, uh, Ken Dodd. Thank you, thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. By Joe, what a smashing time everybody's having here at Dodlin's Holiday Camp. Come on, you happy holiday makers, enjoy yourselves. Ha <laughs> ha! Let's go into the amusement arcade. Here we are, all merry and bright in the amusement arcade. <laughs> Another lucky winner, folks. <laughs> what a smashing holiday we're all having here, aren't we? Do you know, I've just realised that this is the Christmas edition of our show. <laughs> And it's, and, it, and it's my birthday today. Thank you, thank you. Right, right. Let's, let's have all those wonderful presents that I know you've all bought for me. Right, oh, that's it, is it? <laughs> ah, well, never mind. It's like Shakespeare said. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. So, to the lot of you. <laughs> the party's over. That's it. Now then, now, especially for those of you who may have missed the previous installments of my romantic serial, here is the story so far. Deborah and Dickie sat holding hands in the summer house. They were discussing their future. I think I might have a go at tin mining, said Deborah. <laughs> Basil Bustable, the tennis club cad, gripped Naomi by the umpire's chair. <laughs> he realized that this was no ordinary affair. This one had a beard. <laughs> I can't go on meeting you secretly like this, he said, trying to kiss her through the bungle of a barrel. <laughs> Meanwhile, in an exclusive restaurant in the West End, a fair-haired, handsome young chap sat at the corner table. He blushed. I thought it was the finger bowl, he said shyly, drying his feet on the tablecloth. <laughs> I say, you there. Yes. Which is the best way to pin her in the car? Grab hold of her in a tickle tackle. <laughs> I say, what a topping idea. And with that, he donned a concrete wig and dived headfirst through the nearest brick wall. Hello, doggy, it's us again. Yes, us again. <laughs> Good gracious me, it's Mr. and Mrs. Smalley, the little Diddy people from Diddy Land. Who's the nice little old lady you've brought with you? I'm their little Diddy Granny. Little Diddy Granny? And my feet are killing me. I'll have a sit down on this matchbox. <laughs> what are you all doing here, anyway? We come to watch the parade. Yes, watch the parade. Oh, the parade. Oh, yes, of course. The march passed by the 1st Battalion of the Naughty Ash Diddy Men. Look at the little Diddy Sergeant Major. <laughs> Did you enjoy that little Diddy parade? And, and how about little Diddy Granny? laying a rubber bouncing egg. <laughs> or how to get your own back. <laughs> well, what do you know? Did you know that some men with extra large Adam's apples are earning as much as 15 shillings an hour modeling for doorknobs? <laughs> Well, what do you know? Well, I know that if I don't jump in quickly, I'll never get around to announcing our guests for this week. Brian Poole and the Tremolos. Someone loves you.
Worried by unwanted hair? Do the unwanted hairs on your legs make people think that you are wearing fur jeans? <laughs> Remove those unsightly hairs in just two seconds with a genuine Doddy blow lamp. <laughs> Until quite recently, my wife was very depressed, bad tempered, and difficult to live with. But that's all gone now, thanks to. <laughs> What is a pimple? <laughs> a pimple is that loyal little chap who will stay very close to you for days, weeks, months. A pimple can be a real friend to you. If it's on the back of your neck, you can use it for a collar stud. <laughs> sweet things give some people pimples. They eat something sweet for supper, and that same night, while they're fast asleep, Groups of perfect pimples. <laughs> Sometimes a pimple likes to position itself at the end of your nose so that he can see you and that you can see him. A pimple knows no social barriers. Even posh people produce prime pimples. <laughs> Remember the Barretts of Pimple Street. If you have an outsized pimple on your nose, whatever you do, don't try and remove it this way. Oh! 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 <laughs> Hello, all you gardening maniacs. <laughs> this is your own gardening chum, Ivor Lupin. <laughs> I'll not keep you a minute, I'm just pulling me... Pansies up in the greenhouse. <laughs> now, if you're having trouble with your garden, do what I did. Turn it over to the wife. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I've got quite a little surprise for my wife. I've just made her a fish pond. Oh, she will get a surprise as she walks past it and the crocodile grabs all of her. <laughs> By Jove, we nearly had a very nasty accident in this garden last Saturday afternoon. 
You see, I lit a big bonfire to burn some rubbish, and I didn't notice the wife's mother asleep in the deck chair. <laughs> the gentleman in the house opposite realized the danger, and he leaped over the fence and dragged us to safety. I'll never speak to that man again as long as I... <laughs> This week, I'm going to show you how to adjust the motor on an electric lawnmower. Now, this little job is very, very tricky. Oh, what's that? Oh, look, there's the lady from the house next door come out to do a bit of sunbathing in her garden, <laughs> wearing one of them bikinis. <clears throat> yes. Now, now this lawnmower here is, is very tricky. A cool by Joe. <laughs> yes, now, this lawnmower... <clears throat> I'll show you how to climb on top of the shed and, and mend the roof. <laughs> Just look at that. First, you need a stepladder and a pair of binoculars. Now, first, have a good deco, because when you leave on... Are you still undecided about where to go for your summer holidays? Then perhaps the world-famous Doddy Holiday Guide Bureau can help. We run very reasonable family holidays. Here is Mrs. T.T. from the Isle of Man to tell us about her family holiday. How many children did you take with you on your family holiday, Mrs. T.T.? Uh, Sixteen children. Sixteen? That's a lot of children. I only had six when I left. <laughs> oh, well, as long as you enjoyed yourself. Um, and now, here is the old age pensioner who has won our exciting summer contest and a free, fabulous tour of the world. Congratulations, sir. And would you tell us your name? Oh, Ned. I'm a hundred and... a hundred and two. Oh, Ned. Well, I'm delighted to be able to tell you, Pop, that you have won this fabulous holiday. Here's your first class ticket, which will take you all around the world. Eighty-seven years. I'm going on a proper holiday. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Billy. Ah. <laughs> oh, well, we won't waste it. I'll give the ticket to the wife's mother. <laughs> We've had quite a number of letters from listeners all saying how much they enjoy the work of our old country friend, Percy Edwards. Some of you like him so much that you say in your letters, if he has pups, save us one. <laughs> Lord's Cricket Ground. He's a magnificent batsman. Brilliant. It's amazing when you realize he's totally colorblind in his left foot. <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh, yes. He's got two little holes in his nose. <laughs> Good gracious. He's a brick. He's bowling with two short legs. I thought he was running awkwardly. His father was in the field with Grace. Oh. Well, I'm all for brighter cricket. At Old Trafford, he got five for one, two ducks before lunch. Then his wife arrived and stopped him from bowling a maiden over. Well, I should think so. Any woman would have done the same. He was caught in front of the pavilion. Was he the swine? <laughs> He's got to go into hospital with cartilage trouble. Oh, oh, I can't sit here and watch him after what you just told me. I must leave. I'll come with you, Daphne. <laughs> Where's me toppy apple? <laughs> yeah, what? Where's me toppy apple? I can't find it. I haven't seen you, toppy apple. Might be behind the clock on the mantelpiece. You don't leave toppy apples behind the clock on the mantelpiece, eh? Where do you leave them, then? If I knew that, I'd know where'd be toppy apple one. <laughs> 
What have you got in your hand? It's the toffee apple. <laughs> that my toffee apple? No, no, yours has got a longer stick than my toffee apple. <laughs> have you only got a little stick on your toffee apple? <laughs> Yay. Ah. Maybe toffee apple. Oh, stop upsetting yourself like that. Sit down, relax. Okay, I will. Ooh! I found me toppy apple. <laughs> Where's me shirt? Where's you up? Where's me shirt? Oh. I can't see the toppy apple with no shirt, can I? Where's me shirt? I don't know. I can't find me shirt anywhere. What colour tiger was this toppy apple? <laughs> Tears for souvenirs are all you've left me Memories of a love you've never met Tears can mend a broken heart, I must confess. Let's forgive and forget, turn our tears of regret once more. Tears can't mend a broken heart, I must confess. Let's forgive and forget that our tears of regret once more to tears of heart. date with disaster brought to you by that crazy bunch of mixed up muddlers who could never do a thing right men like Roddy McDoddy the world's worst Scottish country dancer are you right lads right then away we go <laughs> now meet Billy Dodton the worst ever husband I haven't forgotten our anniversary, love, and I've brought you this musical locket. Oh, Billy, it's beautiful. Go on, then, open it. Open the lid. Right, love. <laughs> Keeping a tight hold on the game is Arthur Dodd, the worst referee ever to take charge of a football match. You handle, you handle that ball once more and I'll send you off. I'm the goalkeeper. Don't argue. <laughs> And nobody will ever take the title of world's worst poet away from Byron Dodd. My love is like an English rose. She's got golden hair and a big red setter that I'll have for her daughter. Oh, how I wish we two were wed, and every day we'd spend in happiness together. <laughs> just a place. I'd worship you upon my knees. 
If you'll only get rid of that dog, it's full of... I don't know what they are, but I think it's flecky myself. I've seen little things that all... Oh, honestly. Now for a journey into the heart of the wild, untamed jungle, where we should meet the world's worst ape man. I am the world's worst ape man. My name is Sammy Tarzan Jr. I live in a rude hut. The writing's on the wall. <laughs> and you think you've got problems. <laughs> My story begins one night when I returned home to my little treetop house and my family of three. Jane, Boy and Cheetah, our pet monkey. I climbed the rope ladder and went in to find that Jane had retired. She's 65, so it's not before time. <laughs> Tarzan, him come home. I wish you'd learned to talk properly you now. <laughs> Hello, lovey. Yes, Tarzan, him come home. I see you had your hair done. Jane, look beautiful for Tarzan. Yes, looks very nice. Put it on. <laughs> And how's my lad, hey? How's boy? He's a real jungle boy, he is. Tough, hard as nails, and frightened of nothing. Bless you, Tarzan. <laughs> Bless you too, Jane. Jane, knit Tarzan, you loincloth. Oh, let's say, oh yes, very nutty. <laughs> I'll have to try it on now. <laughs> there we are. <clears throat> too tight? No, you've left the knitting needles in. <laughs> morning I woke up at the crack of noon and as I walked through the jungle I could see all the exotic fruits. I saw a man go, then a woman go, then I followed with the chase. <laughs> Where are we up to? Oh I <laughs> the jungle was very dense. I felt at home there. <laughs> then I saw him staggering towards me. There's an old man it was Banana Bill. No one knew where he come from, but judging by the shape of his legs, it must have been Bo. In spite of everything, he was still the native's idea of what the typical Englishman is. Drunk, bone idle, and always on the tap. You've got to help me, Tarzan. You've got to help me. I can have a drink. I can't go on unless I have a drink. Oh, please, Tarzan. Give me a drink. Please, please. Ah, oh, bless him. Give him a drink, Tarzan. Oh, all right, then. Here you are. Oh, Tar Tarzan. <sighs> to think that you were once a man of position, a leading socialite, captain of the Brixton Polo Club. You were never away from cows. Pardon? You know. <laughs> Yachting and that. And now you've sunk to this. God, I've let the side down. I'll make it all up to you, Tarzan. The Jungle Telegraph. What's it saying? Listen. Have gone to me mother's. Have left a missionary on low light in the open. <laughs> it's your fire water that's caused all this. <laughs> We're surrounded. <laughs> what are they going to do with us? Oh, be careful with that blowpipe. <laughs> One of us is going to be sacrificed. It's the work of the green goddess. The green goddess? The queen of the jungle. And no man has ever set eyes on her. Here she is now, the green goddess. Hello, everyone. Here we are again, then. Yeah. What's your name, then, Cheeky? Tarzan, Mrs. Tarzan, Mrs. That's a nice name, isn't it? <laughs> And is this your little friend what you used to play nice games with in the jungle? I'm Banana Bill. Serves you right and all. <laughs> now then, which one of you two is going in the pot? Oh, not me. Not me, Mrs. No, you, you wouldn't like me, love. I mean, there isn't an hour in the month. I'm out of season. I'll go in the pot. Hey? I started all this and I said I'd make it up to you, Tarzan. You can bang me in the pot. Right, lads. Bang the airy one in. <laughs> Oh, 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 ow! And after all the things I called him, <laughs> sir, you're British. Ta, oh, ow! Here, yeah. Tarzan, Ooh. I am glad it was him and not you. Well, you've got what you wanted now, Missy, so I'll be on my way now. Oh, no, we haven't finished the ceremony yet. 
The Ed Man wants to say a few words to you and me. Do you, Tarzan, take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? Here, no, no, Mrs. Of course he no, does. no, no, I'll go in the pot. No. Not like the Ed Man. No, 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 and they hope that he'll come nicely to the boil in just seven days from now. Along with John Slater, Percy Edwards, Peter Hudson, Patricia Hayes, Wallace Eaton, Brian Poole and the Tremolos and Judith Chalmers. With the BBC Review Orchestra, leader Julian Guyard, conductor Malcolm Lockyer. The script was written by Eddie Braben and Ken Dodd and the show, which was recorded, was produced by Bill Wesley. <laughs>